fun for having. Aloha. I'm Kali Lucas, and this is Hawaii is my mainland on Think Tech Hawaii. This week, um, following last week's show with Dr. John Osoria, we talked about the recent Department of Interior um, rulemaking. And uh, there's a follow-up on the Hawaii is my mainland blog to that. And uh, I talk about what happened when I actually did try and call Na'i Aupuni. Um, so go ahead and check that out for more information. Today we are looking at the issues around Native Hawaiians in a very different way. Um, my guest today is Meliana Meyer. Aloha. <laughs> um, we've known each other for a couple of decades. I always like to um, show the connections because especially in this community, the connections are what make it, make it so rich. Absolutely. Thank you, Kali. Um, Meliana is a fine artist and a filmmaker and an educator and r truly uh, embodies the community building um, spirit in, in not just the Hawaiian community, but really here locally. Um, you've been working for decades in so many ways, dizzying. Uh, <laughs> um, so right now, last night I went to see the, um, the installation at the Arts at Mark's Garage, which is part of this whole Ku'uaina Aloha project. Correct. Um, so can you kind of give us the background of the Ku'uaina Aloha project and then um, we'll take it from there. Sure, I'd love to. The film project and the idea for that actually was inspired by letters that were given to me by a dear friend, um, Noi Noi Silva. She was working on her book, Aloha Betrayed. And she said, you know, I want you to look at uh, these letters. They're from your aunt. And I said, really? Where did you get them? And unbeknownst to me, they were in the archives. So the most amazing thing about that was that I, I had this revelatory experience and of thinking, wow, my aunt was a confidant of the Queens. She was present at the time of the overthrow. She and Kwehilani Campbell uh, worked on uh, putting the petition of 38,000 signatures together. So she played a very important role. And I asked myself, well, what am I doing? So I was like, oh, no, don't ask that question, because you're going to hear voices telling you, keep going or get involved, make another film. <laughs> so that's actually how all this happened. And then extraordinary people joined in the project. Everyone from Alice Walker to Alan Bollinger to Vivian Hillgrove to an extraordinary uh, bunch of people as well as uh, my partner, current partner, co-producing with me, which is, um, who is David uh, Kalama. So I think it was two years ago, uh, I was at Washington Place with you, with Alice Walker. That was an amazing evening and as Part of that, um, you encouraged people to um, read sections from the letters Correct. and the Queen. Correct. That was incredibly moving, and I have since um, been part of that one one other time. Tell me how you how you came to develop that and how how that's been. Um, moving the project forward. Well, there's so much work in the community, great work that's being done by everyone. So I, I feel that I am but a cog in, in the wheels moving forward in the, in the Hawaiian community to do really important good work. So this whole notion of uh, reading first person narratives and journals and letters is something that a lot of documentarians really want to do because they're first person voices. They're authentic, they're resonant. You don't have to invent anything. Here's what they said 100 and some odd years ago. So the letters and Lili Wu's responses are very compelling. And I feel that it's my kuleana, my responsibility to bring that material forward. So that's really the, the gist of it. And it's also important in these times to really um, make a point to say, hey, this is not a new struggle. This is something that's been going on since 18, before 1893. So I think that is a really critical thing to pay attention to. And as uh, someone who's participating in when you set up these events, it um, 
makes it personal, even if it's not my story, yeah. you get it. And that was really um, very profound. Um, the, um, the film itself right. is still in the works. Right. But we have something we can show. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, Colm, I, it, the sound part isn't going to work uh, okay. today because I'm new at this and didn't understand the technical limitations. But perhaps you can tell us what's going on um, in I'd love the to. first clip. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, We open to Ilani Palace and pictures of my aunt and her letters to the Queen and in my crazy, messy studio with all of the <laughs> dictionaries and things. And I'm, I'm really struggling to try to understand the language. I'm doing my drawings, but I'm really wanting to know the history, but I have no access to the, to the language. And as this little film sketch unfolds, what you see is this commentary of letters that are between Lili U and um, Aima Navahi. And these are extraordinary pictures that are very poignant from the 1920s. And, and for me, the eyes of these individuals tell the real story, the great sadness. And Lili U goes on to speak about her people just surviving. So you can appreciate at that point how difficult um, the situation was f f for her and um, in terms of understanding that this issue really is about care for the land and being dislocated from it and our need to return to it and to care for it because she is our mother she is that which feeds so these letters again speak of what's going on at that point of in history and it's, uh, it's really galling. And then the truth of these uh, meetings is, is extraordinary because it, it's, it's shocking, you know, when you find out that all of this is being done and it's very underhanded. And Lili speaks of her, her taking care of these Malihini and all of a sudden she's faced with the Honolulu rifles at her door um, and a Gatling gun that is like a machine gun. And, and they're really serious about uh, ending her life. So this beautiful little piece is to say to people, this is the emotional load of the work. That's, that's so. Um, the, the soundtrack for this uh, is uh, the Adagio by Samuel Barber. Right. And it is so moving. Um, cannot wait till this film it's finished. <laughs> well, listen, stay tuned. We'll make sure that, you, you know, everyone gets to, to know about it. And the fact that it's a, a feature-length documentary is very unusual. And it's, it's intended to be a visual poem. So that's why the work is important, because we're trying to do something different. We're trying to really not give you facts and figures, because a lot of people know the facts and figures. What we're trying to do is bring people to the emotion of loss, of trauma, of abandonment, of disparaging um, feelings, so that when we get to this point at the um, end of the film, you'll feel uplifted, you'll know that Hawaiians are doing great things in community today in a wide range of areas, I mean, in education and in health, but there's still such need in the community, so. As, um, as the evening went on, yesterday um, there were some very very good communications conversations that happened um, people I've known for a long time but um, also part Hawaiians and um, it's like we never really got around to talking about what our our respective experiences yeah. are are around that you know mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're used to um, um, not talking about it well we're used to like you know like talking around it or hoping that we can allude to something and I, I don't know if that's so much Hawaiian as it is our way of, of tiptoeing and trying not to tread heavily our, on our own emotions or our own inabilities to deal with really big issues but the film itself has propelled 
the work and this mural being done, it, it's a little bit out of sequence because typically we wanted the, the mural to go with the film so that when people come out of the experience, they have something to contemplate this concrete, something to be with, you know. Okay, so let's talk about how the, the mural part of okay. this happened. Okay. Um, there were how many there are how many artists are involved can you tell us who they are sure I'd love to tell you who they are because large work like this does not get done alone <laughs> and the brilliance and genius of these um, friends and brilliant artists is extraordinary Al Lagunero he is our um, kupuna artist and um, myself Kahi Ching, Hari Nani Orm, mm. Carl Powell and Salman Enos so you, you really couldn't get a greater bunch of friends no. nor artists and committed to not only the cause of justice and what this piece is about, but the cause of community and bringing um, healing to community. This is an amazing group of artists. And I can just, I'd love to sing their praises forever, really and truly, so I'm grateful. So what was the, um, if you can talk about maybe an incident where it was really clear that healing was happening through this. I know you've had dozens of them, but or maybe hundreds. I don't know. But yeah. can you can you talk about one or two? Sure. Actually, you know, I've been um, going around like everybody else, <clears throat> contemplating what to do about the historical context of Hawaii, and then finding out the real truth to Hawaii. And you go through periods. So I just want to invite everyone out there to understand that. There are cycles, whether they're of grief or finding out truths about something or someone. Um, you have to keep cycling until you get to a point where you don't have that charge anymore. So I had an experience um, recently where I actually called, um, and I think a lot of it was you know, on the verge of not only this work, but just wanting to do my own work. Because that's actually what I really want to share is that we think it's everyone else's responsibility to do something when in fact it's, it's really ours because then we can do so much more with and for others. So I actually called a person who I will leave nameless but a, a really problematic and very tortuous um, relationship with my family from that time. And I, um, I said I, I just want to say I'm sorry and I, I was shocked that that came out of my mouth I'm looking around going what the heck where did that come from and I didn't really talk to this person but I talked to his wife and the reason I'm bringing it up is because I said and she said what are you sorry for and I said for the for the enmity and hatred I've had towards his family and the crazy thing happened all of this weight just lifted off of me and I just went wow this was I didn't expect this. So this whole notion of forgiveness is an active process. It's not just something you think about and go, okay, today at 2 o'clock, this is what I'm going to do. I check it off my list. It's a, it's a lifetime thing. So whether it's that or some a, a big trauma that happened when I was 26, okay. you know, those kinds of things, you just know that um, you have to keep working. Yeah. We're going to take a, a short break and come right back. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Welcome back to Hawaii is My Mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas, and my guest today is the gorgeous native Hawaiian artist, <laughs> Miliana Meyer. I'm Sounds like a friend. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so we saw a, a clip that addressed the the early um, uh, the clip of your mo movie Kuai Na Aloha that had the the historical back in the day at the time of the overthrow right. kind of pain, and then there were decades where um, there just wasn't much happening except a lot of suffering. And then the next section of the film, let's have a look at that. Um, what what kind of happens next? The conversation here is about me just coming to know my aunt and coming to see that I also have responsibility in terms of uh, bringing this information forward, but doing it in a way that somehow will do more than just talk about history. It's actually trying to activate, trying to um, enliven conversations now to be to be more current today and, and actually look at the issues that are still facing Hawaiians. Houselessness, incarceration, poor health, poor education. You know, just being fortunate to have had a great growing up in childhood, the both of us, we, we have a lot to give back for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's a kuleana that's really important to me. And that's something I invite everybody to participate in because I really believe as I do with collaborative work, that each of us can make a difference. And this scene is really important coming up because Lili U talks in her letters about um, truth having no uh, fear of time. And that, you know, two people were, um, and this is my aunt's paper, Kela Haina and uncle um, Joseph Navahi. So these two took a very active stance and role in the community to stand for the people and our beloved country. So the issues then are, are very current today. This was um, Santa Island, this is and Waimanalo, this is um, Waikane. And many of these people in these beautiful photographs by Ed Grevy um, have, walked, have come up to me because I did uh, 42 uh, presentations in murals, I mean in libraries saying, oh, that was me 30 years ago or this is my family, or so, you know, people think, and they say to Hawaiians, you know, get over it, and I'm going, really? How can you get over something that's never been even acknowledged? That's so that is indeed why I'm, I'm doing the work, so that we can actually be more, more um, proactive in, in our own healing, so. Um, the, in Hawaii we did we have not had a truth and reconciliation uh, commission process that, as you say, n things have not been acknowledged. Um, as this um, process is moving through um, with the mural and the, you have other activities, um, how, how can people kind of join in? Actually, it's a really good question, Koei. I think people can join in by asking members of their family, you know, how they feel or, or what they need today to right wrongs, in other words, or to just learn more. You know, whether it's the pinky show that you can Google, which is really fantastic, because in 20 minutes you're going to get your, your big dose of history and reality check, or just participating in things through the civic clubs, for example through your own um, neighborhood boards and groups who are doing things to reclaim whether the local ia or the, the loikalo. I mean, there's so many things going on. And I have to say, great things are going on in the schools, with the charter schools. So, you know, it's just a matter of getting involved and saying, what, what part of this conversation do you want to be a part of that's going to give you something back that you can also give, you know? So back to the back to the mural. You can see it our, uh, in the backdrop there. Um, there was not only these beautiful the beautiful mural, mural, but there were these small um, little mini paintings. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's the story on that? Well, you They're know, gorgeous. It's fantastic um, to think that all of those paintings really reflect the diversity of the six painters. So we are so unique and diverse in our styles, but it's, it's a testament to each of us that we believe in each other, we trust each other, and we want to work together for a united purpose. 
So it's a visual ensemble. It's, yeah. And right now it's at the Arts at Mark's Garage. Correct. It's going to be there... Until this Saturday. Okay. Only. So, all right. So yeah. that's not a long time. You just got to get, get Heli on down. It's so, it's really gorgeous. And it's so easy to just walk into the Arts at Mark's Garage. There's no entry fee. There's no nothing. You no, know, you just 1161 New Wanu Street. And yeah. they're open from, I believe it's 10 or Tomorrow, tomorrow, today's Friday, it'll be open from 12 to 5 tomorrow. And then what happens to well, it? Well, it's had an amazing uh, uh, first run. We have four different communities who are asking for it already. So it will go to uh, a school for um, three weeks. It'll go to a Punahou school because they're looking for a way to have real conversations about healing. And so that's exciting, and uh, the very exciting, very the, proud of. Yeah, I, we are. I, we yeah. are. I am. It's just very thrilled, and the School of Medicine has asked for it because we're going to be developing um, curriculum on historical trauma and utilizing the mural for that, and that's our hope. And it uh, has already been asked for uh, on the island of Molokai, for example. Wow. So we'll be taking. Um, copies of thing of the of the work to different places because the mural really can't travel to all of these places that we're being asked to bring it so but it's supposed to be with a film everybody so if you if you really want to know what to do uh, find out let's find out how you could uh, uh, send your donation we have to figure out how to do one of those Indiegogo campaigns or things because yeah. yeah that's the the big thing we need to figure out how to do so I, I'm going to ask David David can you help figure that out I I, I heard a figure last night um, that the work uh, David said that there have been thirty four thousand engagements so far with this project right and so that means not just that somebody passively um, went to an event mm -hmm. um, but that there was um, engagement. That's a lot. That is a lot. That, that is a lot. But you know, when you think about going to 42 libraries, for example, I went to 42 libraries with wow. this film sketch and Lili U's new book that, uh, you know, her book, Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen, uh, it was re uh, annotated and presented, and it's a beautiful piece because it doesn't leave out any of the history. So it toured with the state libraries, and, uh, and that was quite a project. But it brought the, the sketch to the communities, and they responded really extraordinarily. And it, it, it elicited a lot of emotions, and they're waiting for the film to, to finish as well. So, I, I have to say, just in that, in that short clip that we saw, um, it was so moving for me because right in, like, in the first 20 seconds, the, it's going up the, the staircase at Iolani Palace. Um, which was built by my ancestors, uh, yeah. George uh, and Charles Lucas, with the Honolulu planing mill. <laughs> and then at the end, um, the, or the end of that segment, there's a, a shot in the throne room. And they also built this wooden cabinet behind the thrones. Wow. And, um, and then in one of your other videos, there's the song, uh, um, Oh, I'm going to say it wrong. Mahalapua. Um, oh, Mahalapua. Mahalapua. Yes. Right. Um, which uh, my great grandmother was part of writing. So it's, it's, it's personal. Amazing. It's personal. That's the point. It's personal. And you all of you have, yeah, all of you, all of us um, who live in Hawaii, I, I, that's the message. It is personal. We need to take it personally and act um, and act. Conscien conscientiously, so it's not to r return um, an anger or an upset for that, but to, to really try to process and figure out how we as islanders living in the most beautiful place in the world can get along better, can do the, the job of um, healing for ourselves and for each other or with each other. That's, yeah. We, As you said, we have to do our own work right. before we can really be um, useful in, yeah. in, in the community and so many points over the, the years you and I have uh, found each other absolutely and um, it's now at a point where um, technology has come along so far that right. we can do this 
incredibly diverse um, uh, community, it's 40 venues to engage. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then um, theaters, um, auditorium cinemas. So you're really going all over with this. It needs, it needs something that needs to be shared, though, and that the message is uh, from our queen, the message is of peace. And she is our Nelson Mandela. She is our Mahatma Gandhi. That is the honoring that we must do and, and, and follow leadership and guidance of spirit that so, will get us somewhere, you know, because the, po the political s scene in the world is not something that I choose to, to follow, so the, the, to speak. The, the contrast between dealing with the, the Department of Interior rules and, and then this um, material has, has brought it into sharp focus for me that, um, that it's like there's a lot of energy being taken away from the healing process, although we're, it's, it's the talk of setting up a government. It's really the, important, by the way. It's, it's really it important. important, but the way that conversation is happening seems to be very sterile and not, if, if we haven't done the work, this work, the, the internal work right. around healing, it makes making those political dis, uh, decisions a lot harder. I, I think so, which is why, you know, when I have, when I think about my beloved Kumu Kilda Lake and the example that he set for us in our halal, it's really about walking the talk of spirit and of our kupuna and the values and traditions that we hold versus getting mired in the technicalities of a system that doesn't work to begin with. So for me, it's like, why would I want to do that? So I believe in nation building. I just have a very simple idea about that. It's like, hey, you, you took my bicycle, give my bicycle back. You took our land. All you have to do is give your la our land back. I mean, it's as simple as that. Why does it have to be any more complicated? <laughs> well, this is a good time for us to take another little break, and we'll be right back with Hawaii. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and of course you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, uh, uh, actors, of course. And we don't only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. Aloha, we're back with Hawaii is My Mainland, and today we have Meliana Meyer, and we're talking about the installation that's currently at the Arts at Mark's Garage, um, only through Saturday. Um, but it's uh, well worth the trip, especially if you're downtown anyway. So we'll talk about the um, process and the content of the, the mural, please process, my goodness. The process is to understand as a creative, as an artist, that we are conduits. And if we are conduits, all we need to do is get out of our own way. <laughs> and for that matter, the way of your, my five colleagues. In other words, the work is very intense and it's very um, driven by conversation and prayer and research. Uh, before we start, and then we, we do work together as uh, primary sketches, preliminary sketches, and then final sketches. And then even as we grid up and scale up for this um, large work, we're, we're changing all the time. So we really have to pay attention to each other. And it's really not about obsessing in a corner and saying, this part is mine and this part is yours. People always say, how is it possible to get six individual styles yeah. that are as diverse as yours to, to work? 
you just keep are you moving. working at the all at the same time we are we're all working at the same time and we're all getting out of each other's way in other words we have the permission to work on each other's part or uh -huh. in, and so we move so there is each other has a part each person has a part you you the little piece of paint you put on is your little part in other words you're everywhere so that is a metaphor for all of us because the piece does not you can't do work that this that's this large and this complicated if you don't have everyone's energy coming up together so it's it's a it's a fascinating thing to watch and revel in because this is the seventh mural we've done we've, wow so yeah we've done one at uh, Helamoa at in Waikiki at the Sheraton we've we've completed a work at the convention center uh, the Kalihi stream mural which is 450 feet we have wow. Uh, one at the Bishop Museum. And then there's Mokalaia. Mokalaia. Can't forget Mokalaia, that beautiful piece. I get to see yeah, that tomorrow. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. yeah. So the work is purposeful and it's intentional. And, and with these murals, they, they have messages. So when you're actually working on it um, together, uh, does somebody do the sketch and then or is it just an organic thing because your friends very much, oh. very much organic but okay. but you've got somebody who's who's more expert at um at doing line drawings that would be solomon and um al and 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 karinani everyone's got their own skill set they're bringing in kahi so so it's actually honoring each other's work and then our stylistic differences go away because really we're focusing on the message. It certainly, I mean, it does not look like um, six different people did it. Yeah. It is so beautiful and the message is so powerful. Um, you told a little story last night about someone's child, would you? Well, that child is, is my uh, grandson, so he's a marker in this mural for that generation of youngsters. And the two sides. And the two sides. Um, well, first of all, the one side is our narrative. It's very particular to Hawaiian uh, values and insights. Although for indigenous everywhere, they would acknowledge the land and love of land and Brother Kahlo in Mexico and New Mexico, they'd have Sister Corn. I mean, so these symbols and icons in the work represent for me things that are important for me to, to gift and offer to generations that co will come afterwards. So the, the piece itself is about reviving protocols and language, most importantly, offering prayer, honoring traditions in terms of what we are doing on, in our, um, on our heiau, and then um, the innovation of new forms and the avatar image at the end of this mural that's coming up, which is held as, a, a, as an unformed piece for that generation to complete. And there's a mm. hand on the bottom that is a hand of the ancestor holding space. So it's, it's really storytelling. Wow. It's storytelling. And then the other side is, you know, pain and suffering. So it's a very difficult piece to deal with, but it's also a remarkable opportunity to sit with, you know, personal pain, loss, generational issues. And when, when you hear Kanikao with sitting in front of that red side it's it's a, not unnerving but it's really a profound experience because really if we have something concrete to look at i think i think that really um is a possible avenue into pain in a different way because when you see it it's meant to tell you oh this it can all have happened but these little eddies of green these little beautiful oases of green are meant to be reflections of healing coming from the other side. So we've survived yeah, the worst. We survived, we're resilient, we can, we can make it as long as we have each other to hold on to, to bring forward, to assist, and then just to forgive and to understand this whole uh, um, process is not a one-time experience, it's something that goes on, it's ongoing. So yeah. you have not just this coming up next week. There's a whole um, another venue and project. Right. Um, October 18th at uh, Nemea, Hawaii. Can you talk about sure. that, please? Um, our dear friend Charmaine Crockett wanted to uh, support this work, so she had a great idea to do a story challenge. So on the 18th at 3.30, we're going to be having readings with 
with some very uh, wonderful poets uh, and winners of this little story challenge. So it's kind of a great opportunity to see work made manifest through words and not just color. So a, a poet friend in town, uh, Carlo Mia, uh, from, she's a Fulbright scholar in town. She'll be presenting a piece that she did inspired by the mural as well as these um, folks who, who won the story challenge and others who are invited to, to come. So please feel free to attend. It should be a great reading with all sorts of extraordinary people. Do you know um, anything about any of the winners? Or are you, do I do. You know? um, I do in the sense that many, many um, entries were, were submitted by my dear um, sister's, sister Manu's class from West Oahu. Um, Manu's class, tell Manu's, us. It was what? a healing, it was, it was a for heal, um, uh, people in the healing profession. And then others came forward to come and see the mural because that was a prerequisite. You needed to be with the mural so then you could write about it. So we had a storytelling workshop, a visual storytelling workshop as well. So all of these different things are um, kind of an experiment to see how the mural uh, generates ideas and conversation and needed conversation about healing and wellness and forgiveness. And moving forward, most importantly. Moving forward. Yeah. Um, so moving forward, this project um, is going to need some assistance. Correct. <laughs> and um, uh, is there some place that we can specifically talk about um, people? What's the best thing to go to your Kuulaina Aloha website? website. The, the website is the best, and IDA has... Uh, a site up for us. IDA is the International Documentary Association. Thank you. And they are supporting the work. They are 501c3 and the Pu'uhonua Society. You can send correspondence to them or just go down to Namea Native Books and, and put a little envelope that says Kuai na Aloha, you know, Kokua for the project and, um, and, and address it to Pu'uhonua. It is also 501c3. So your donation is tax deductible. So, yay. Yay, exactly. Um, there, I, I can only imagine that. Um, so this has been how many years so far? It's been a, a, a huge amount. It's been 10. 10 years. My mother yeah. died, uh, Kumu died, and all of this was happening in the middle of in 2008 where there was a collapse of all sorts of things. So, so I, I, we've resurrected the project, and I have to really give a shout out to David uh, Kalama and his wonderful sister Honeni because Again, none of this work is done by ourselves. And without the, the diligence and the professionalism and the, and the commitment to the work, we could never do and accomplish what we need to do. So There are um, also videos of the, this process yes. that um, are available on YouTube. Correct. So Kalama Productions. Thank you. Kalama Inc. Productions. I -N -C, Inc. And it'll come up, Aha Aina a Mural or it will come up film sketch. So please go ahead and take a look and see what you think and your feedback would be very important as we're trying to do this so that it's a benefit to everyone, not just Hawaiians. Because it's really not a matter of one group healing and another group not. It's a, group, it's a matter of all of us understanding the issues and choosing to help and love one another. That's the goal anyway. The, so. <laughs> and one of the goals that um, I uh, am still holding for the community is that we talked about this a little bit last night mm -hmm. that right now you're going out into the community and everywhere you can and that's that's needed that's that work has to be done because there's because there's no place to go right as Hawaiians we don't no. we don't have a Hawaiian cultural center right we have a Polynesian cultural center but that's really in no way Reflective, uh, a, a reflective of, of us, where we belong. Yeah. Or, is nor is there a space there for Native Hawaiians and others to have to have a voice about the history right. to actually do this it's sort of genera generational healing. And um, um, as um, when my daughter was young, and I tried to explain to her about our history, it was like, wow, how do I do this? Yeah. And well, you have found an extraordinary way <laughs> to to help out others in the community. But 
if we had a center where um, one could go, one could grieve, one could talk about right. um, the stories in one's family, um, learn the language, learn the culture, yeah. without going through this Western, where's your, what's your GPA and uh, yeah. matriculating. Um, I am holding out a vision for that, Miliana, that... I think that's a good vision, Koei, I really do. That, I just, go ahead. That there's a center where something like this can live mm -hmm. and, and be there for people to come to. Right. And uh, to, to grieve and heal. Yeah. Gosh, wouldn't that be an incredible opportunity? I, I would like to just welcome the idea of, or invite the idea of healing at places like Mauna Ala, going to uh, homesteads, or I, I do Hiwai, um in the ocean, which is really helpful. And I think it would be great if we could collectively do more of this work together. So perhaps maybe that's the next step. We've actually done a lot of work at the, at the Iolani Palace, believe it or not. And we, we celebrate Lilio's birthday every year. Yes, that's and, and that was part of all of this movement to heal back in 2006. So I just want to say there are places, there are people who are moving in this direction. So don't feel alone and just know or reach out because there are people who want to do the same thing. Many people, as a matter of fact. I, I recently, a uh, couple of weeks ago, was the Maipuina. Right. Um, did that again. That's been going on for a while. It and has been. A, and, we, and I participated in it every year as a chanter. And I just kind of offer that to Kumu. But that is exactly what these kinds of pieces are. They're educational pieces. They're not meant to uh, insult or confront or, or aggress. They're meant to inform. And because they do, people can make the choices to either believe truth, believe in what has happened, or not. But um, my Puina has been really an important that, part of, of the community work that's being done. That's the walking tour. I, yeah. I realize I didn't yeah. explain what that is. Yeah. The walking tour downtown Honolulu that um, is a historical reenactment of the, the events right. leading up to the right. overthrow. And, and the characters that have evolved are uh -huh. so wonderful and make it so easy for people who to, to have get just it. arrived get in Honolulu right. the day before to get, it. to get it. Well, that's the good work of um, Victoria Newbel and Sammy who does the directing. So again, and extraordinary people who are committed. That's the word, commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let us um, remain committed and steadfast. Onipa'a <laughs> valeno. Mahalo. Mahalo to you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Miliana, for being here You're with me welcome. on Think Tip. You're welcome. <laughs>